Extra Mile. A fun and informative companion piece to go with this week's episode, which it may be best to listen to first. Delightful sounds of the waterway. Ah, oh, lovely. What the hell is that? It's a, uh... That is a, uh... A little contraption that they have on the waterway for getting rid of uh, all the weeds from underneath. It's really bloody huge. And my boat is currently rocking. Anyway, um, hello folks. How are you all? Are you good? Welcome to Extra Mile, the unscripted and unedited bit, blah, blah, blah. If you're new to this, um, don't forget, probably best to listen to the episode first, then listen to this. Um, or even better, go back and listen to all of the old episodes and then get used to this. Because this will contain lots of things that you just might not understand. Um, I haven't done my usual yawn to welcome you all into Extra Mile uh, because I haven't actually recorded the episode yet. Uh, I'm having to do it in reverse. As you can hear, it's really noisy outside. Uh, birds are up in the cl up in the, the the trees, tweeting away. There's one being really annoying. Um, and because I'm not too far from uh, where HS2 is, which is the the very, 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 very pointless train line that we don't need across the United Kingdom, um, they're making some more cement today, so it's really noisy outside. You can probably hear that kind of rumble that's going on. Um, so yeah, so I haven't recorded the episode yet, but I, th I thought to myself, you know what, sod it. I'm gonna record, um, I'm going to record extra mile first because it's all right if there's a bit of noise in the background that's all good um and then probably tonight i think when everyone is buggered off to bed then i can record this episode so uh normally i would say uh normally i would say oh i don't know whether this quiz question will end up in the episode because i haven't edited it yet this time I can actually say, I don't know whether it'll end in the episode because I haven't recorded it yet. But there we go. So I'm going to pop on my tea, pop on a couple of tea. I'm just going to have a, a herbally. That's all ready to go. And let's do the thing. So um, if you're new to Extra Mile, really go and look at, listen to the old ones and then work your way into it. That's probably the best way. Um, we do some chatty stuff. Uh, we do a little quiz that goes with this. There's some kind of point things, some updates that may seem really pointless, and you'll listen to it and go, "Why is that there?" But you know what? People seem to enjoy it, so that's why I do it. Uh, and then, in the second half of this, we dive into everything that's kind of, kind of, I think is kind of key for the episode. So you're welcome to fast forward into that. You're welcome to switch off as well. It's all good. It's all good. Um, this is my final episode uh, until don't worry i'm not about to end the podcast it's my final episode before we go up to newcastle and birmingham to do some live shows um they're on the sunday and a monday really terrible days to do it but rehearsals are going well uh, i'm rehearsing by myself because obviously paul lives in wrexham and adam lives in spain so uh i'm i'm rehearsing my bit by myself and i'm walking along the canal, canal towpath trying to re remember my lines and looking like a massive nut job um, as mentioned, that horrible sound, you can probably hear that horrible rum rumble in the background. And sometimes you'll hear a cuckoo, 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 as they start pummeling and pummeling the ground. That is HS2 destroying the entire countryside. Or oh, as I like doing when I go down the canal, because they cross over the canal, I always shout up to one of the guys. I go, excuse me, can you tell me how I get a train to Euston? Uh, which they absolutely love because HS2 was meant to go from Manchester, I think it was also Hull and Liverpool and go all the way to London, Euston but uh, they can't do that anymore uh, so it's not going to, I don't think it's going to Hull I don't think it's going to uh, Liverpool and it's not going to Euston weirdly I don't know whether people outside London know this but when you, instead of coming into Euston which is kind of in town as we call it inverted commas um, this actually takes you just outside Wormwood Scrubs so you're literally at the back of Wormwood Scrubs it's not a good place to be dumped and then from there you've got to get a train all the way through Paddington all the way into town so on the 
you may have saved like 30 minutes getting all from Manchester to London really quickly but then you have to waste those 30 minutes to go from essentially Scrubs Lane into town so you waste all that time it really is someone someone in the government thought it would be a great idea to get oh let's get some fast trains remember when we thought about that in the 1950s fast fast trains that's a really good idea and now they've spent hundreds of billions of pounds on our utter pile of shit whereas when you think about it they could really have just spent that money on faster trains or making the trains we've got more comfortable and reliable therefore people wouldn't mind if it takes half an hour longer or even an hour longer to get from one city to another or let's be honest about it what we need now post covid is faster broadband isn't it we need hyper fast broadband like, like they've, they've got in uh in south korea where it's super fast unlike our broadband which is absolute dog shit utter dog shit anyway uh i think my chamomile tea is almost ready i'm having a chamomile because i've had i've had too many um too many coffees today even though they're decaf just too many too many so i thought i thought i'm gonna have myself have myself a, a chamomile which is very nice um thinking while while doing this episode i was thinking to myself god i'll be terrible in prison i really would hate it i mean obviously you know there's always the fear of bum sex when you're in there but if you think about it like you, you you're given a limited amount of tea like i couldn't live with that what about if i ran out of tea and milk and sugar um you you have to you have to work and from the shop then you get biscuits or you have to wait for relatives to come and bring you biscuits that would be a nightmare um you only get exercise for one hour a day so that means you only get fresh air three times a day i couldn't handle that you only get exercise for one hour a day i couldn't handle that i can't handle being cooped up inside um i like it even in winter i have my windows and doors open i have to have fresh air uh I, I couldn't cope with pooing in front of someone that would freak me out like sitting in your cell and you're talking to your your bunk mate and he's reading a book and at the same time you're curling one down you're, you're dropping off mrs brown at the pool it's just like no not gonna have that and then you've got to get naked in front of other people who you don't know and showering in front of people i couldn't handle that also bad food prison food is meant to be very bad um currently uh, I, I mentioned it in the episode it was 28p per person per day um it hasn't really changed that much the interest rate is about the same so it for a prisoner in the uk for three meals a day um it costs the prison service two pounds what well, it costs a taxpayer two pounds 18p per day try making a meal out of that or, or something that's uh edible even Ugh, horrible um and of course I wouldn't be able to cope with the bad beds like even in hotels i can't sleep in hotels because i need windows open i need my own bed i need my own pillow i need to be uh resting on eva's feet to keep them warm for her and then mopping up her sick as always um let's do some quiz questions um there's eight quiz questions here only because one of them later on uh is a three-parter so you get three points for that or or one for each bit of the question so here we go uh, question number one what road is wormwood oh, i always get burpy hiccups when i need to do the questions question number one what road is wormwood scrubs on question number two wormwood scrubs prison was designed by who if you know part one you probably guess part two um question number three what category made this easy for you guys what category from a to d is wormwood scrubs prison look you got a choice of four there it's a one in four chance and i did mention it in the episode uh three times i think question number four what part of the uk did paul come from question number five what magistrate's court was paul sen- sentenced at question number six what was his first offense now this is a three party so you get a point for each so there were three offenses that he was charged with um not including um the the suspended sentence for not paying his fine so it was a three part of that that were so so the the suspended sentence was what he was brought back for the first offense that's what we're talking for the reason why he initially went to court what was he charged for so it was a, that made sense hopefully so it was a three parter what what was it 
Anyway, you find out at the end of this, don't you? Or you could just listen back to the episode and cheat. Who's going to find out? Uh, question number seven. What is slopping out? And question number eight. The main gates of Wormwood Scrubs looks like what? Okay. Normally I would do a little coot update now because the, the coots are kind of working their way, way around the canal and having a bit, a bit of a zip around uh, there was one I saw ages ago which was fantastic, I was moving the boat and you know that the, the coots are flightless birds or they're seemingly flightless and it looks like they're at the point now because what they do is uh, when they get angry and they need to chase off a rival um, they're, they're, they're like a hyper fast Jesus <laughs> they, they, they can walk on water but they can kind of run on water so they kind of pick up a speed and then you can see their little their little wader feet going bah, 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 and they run really fast across the water um, and it's really good to watch they, they do it for like like 100 feet sometimes 200 feet and they're really fast chasing off a rival and sometimes you see them and, and they, they put their little stubby little tiny useless wings out and sometimes it looks like they catch flight so sometimes they're like a couple of inches off the ground maybe two inches off the ground maybe for about 30 or 40 feet and then they land again and stuff like that but there was one I went past the other week and he took flight and he was going and he launched and I was on the boat moving the boat so I'm six foot tall and the boat is probably about two inches two feet off the ground so he was almost eye height with me and he was about eight foot off the ground and he was flying he was kind of dipping left and right and you could see you could see a little look on his cootie little face like the, the excitement that he was flying and he did he did good he, he I think he flew for about 200 feet it was very exciting and I saw him again later on do the same so I think he's not too far away from uh from uh, becoming a flighted bird I don't, I don't think you'll ever make it because I think they're aerodynamically not correct yeah, they're a little bit little bit fat they're, they're kind of more for kind of uh, rivers and canals but you know good on him he did a good job um, one thing I, I enjoyed seeing along the canal because it's kind of May um, I, I bumped into one the other day and it freaked me out and it was hanging from a really really tall tree uh, there was a line of kind of silk thread and in front of it was all of these caterpillars kind of squirming around it and uh, I had to look at what it is is the caterpillars of the winter moth so I uploaded it onto my TikTok account which nobody looks at uh, TikTok is a pile of shit isn't it uh, in fact all social media is a pile of shit uh, so I've uploaded it to there so you can have a little look at it if you like um, I did I did some maths the other day I like doing maths I did some maths the other day and uh, I was trying to work out w w the failure of social media the fact that you can have all these listeners and followers and all that and yet there's no interaction so I picked up um, Lady Gaga's TikTok uh, Twitter account and she's got like 84 million uh, followers and then I looked at her latest thing that she'd posted and she tagged it correctly and she'd done all the hashtags and stuff like that and after a day it had it had only got I think it only got around 45,000 likes which seems a lot for us but for her if you think she's got 84,000 that's 0.05 percent that's pretty terrible isn't it you think you think all those people in the world and you think wow they must be able to see all this and you realize it's just a con you realize it's just dog shit all they're trying to do is to get get money out of you and i realized the other day that the algorithm takes you down and down and down. It, it, it lets you get a little bit high for a bit and you go oh i'm doing really well oh this seems to work that seems to work and you, you've got all the bell ends out there going these are the, the the this is what the algorithm wants and this is what you need to do but that's all bullshit i've worked it out already you it, it takes you high it's like a little it's like a, a drug dealer it takes you high it makes you think you're doing well then it takes you down again it takes you down to the sub level like you know especially on tiktok under inverted commas 300 views which which means probably one view because that's actually people who scroll past it as well and what they want you to do is to pay the money to kind of get it up and high again that's how they make their money that's the model so that's the truth folks social media is screwed that guy is putting an application for a joke I have to listen to this all day. People going past, running and jogging, and you hear snippets of conversation, and you're just like, that sounds really dull. And then the person behind him was going, yeah, 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 yeah. 
probably dreaming of something else. In fact, dreaming of something else, this is what I'd be dreaming of this week, not just Eva. Um, cake of the week, folks, a regular update. I was trying to think of cake, cake of the week and I got thinking about uh, my favorite cake of the week. Uh, God bless her, no longer with us, my grandma. When we were kids, um, we always used to go around grandma and granddad's house in Birmingham. Who do I might? Um, and grandma would always make like sandwiches and cakes and stuff like that. And my favorite was always, she'd make a, a chocolate cake. And it was a really, really nice, soft, moist chocolate sponge. And then in the center was kind of like a line of uh, Nutella chocolate. So do you know the hazelnut chocolate? But on top, I swear she would use a whole giant tub of it and she'd put the whole giant tub on top and really layer it on and she'd go right right who wants some you'd have to eat the sandwiches first the sandwiches were always nice she always did good good sandwiches but then it was like right cake time which was brilliant so um you cut up the cake and it would be a nice big slab and then you put it in your mouth and all the all the kind of hazelnut chocolate and nutella would stick to the top of your mouth and it was gorgeous oh you can't beat a good chocolate cake like there's loads of great as i mentioned before do you know come from like not not a wealthy family come from you know quite a poor family growing up therefore all the things i love are kind of the little treats the kind of the basic simple treats because treats were rare when we were kids and kind of now it's kind of like you know i still don't like posh fancy wanky stuff. i don't go to posh restaurants i hate shit like that i like value for money i like decent food i like quality food i like do you know something something nice that doesn't cost a fortune um and it's the same with cakes as well and something like that it's just wonderful just a wonderful piece of cake fantastic oh so anyway oh does life get any better than dreaming of cake anyway let's dive into some uh extra stuff uh in this episode hang on sorry someone someone just sent me an email i'll ignore it oh hang on it's marked urgent hang on so i best read it sorry folks um but don't worry i know it's not from eva as you know she only uses the internet for porn and shoes let's just be honest about it. And, and sometimes uh going to drinks direct and just placing an order but using my credit card which is weird because i'm a bit i'm always broke and she's as we, as we know she's a millionaire so uh anyway thus thus is my life uh, and also her email messages i mean they usually consist not not normally in english it's normally like <laughs> followed by like loads of distorted images of empty booze bottles and in the background you can kind of see the inside of a prison cell and there's normally like several police officers lying around with kind of bruises and cuts to their face and I think in one of them, I saw one of them was holding up a sign, and on his on his, uh, on his top, in blood, he'd ri just written the words "help," <sighs> like a hostage. Anyway, let let me just read this email. Sorry about this. We'll, we'll get back to business soon. Oh, uh, it's from the chief executive of McVitie's Biscuits. <laughs> oh, brilliant! Great. Okay, uh, it reads, "Dear Michael, wonderful, fabulous Michael." Well, you've you've got my attention. That is a fantastic start. Well done. Um, it says, I just wanted to send you a personal message to thank you for keeping my whole company afloat. Ooh. Thanks to your daily intake of biscuits and cakes. Honestly, I don't know what we would do with my fleet of 800 trucks if you ever, so he's written that in capitals, if you ever decided to go back on a diet. Oh, dear. It's another one of those bloody begging letters. Oh, shit. Okay. <sighs> Let me reassure you that this is not a personal plea. Just because I've booked a six-week break in Acapulco, or that with our new range of Jaffa... Ooh, with our new range of Jaffa cakes coming out soon, there's some in the post. Brilliant. Oh, God. Uh, I've already put down a deposit on a new jet, and while I was getting drunk in Monaco, I crashed my yacht into Lewis Hamilton's mega cruiser. Yikes. The lawyers are calling. Poor bloke. Um, I'm pleading with you. Oh, God. Capitals again. Never, ever, 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 ever go on a diet. Not for my sake. But please, in capitals again, think about all the staff I'd have to lay off. I'd have to shut down a factory. It could even bankrupt a nation. 
please think about their families please think about their children i mean i'd rather not uh, and please think about their lives okay um i realize you're in a difficult situation as every week you have to save money to buy eva a new cast iron liver as the last one melted when she drank neat mate neat neat napalm blimey that was hard to say it was even harder to clear up you ever tried to clear up a spillage of napalm after eva has been on a bender bloody hell so sick was even worse literally it went through the boat it was like that scene in do you know, like aliens where they where they where they cut the face hugger and oh all alien they cut the face hugger a little bit and then all the blood comes it's the hydrochloric acid and it goes through the uh, the hull of the ship and it goes from floor to floor and floor to floor it's like that with eva honestly um it's so bad even someone's car alarm is going off behind me um uh, when she drank napalm but please do not go on a diet ever again well, there we go it ends with best wishes and much groveling sir timothy biscuits the cake king <sighs> so there we go folks um i was going to go back on my diet i've been trying because i'm a bit wibbly wobbly but i guess i'm gonna have to write him a reply yeah and cadbury's chocolate and I guess all cake makers who are out there. Yeah, shit, that's going to take a while. Um, I tell you what, uh, hopefully there's going to be an advert here. That'll pass over some time. And then uh, we'll come back with some extra stuff. Right, emails have been written. So uh, hopefully, hopefully uh, the UK is not going to go into bankruptcy or recession because uh, I'm going on a diet. I've, I've, I think the stock markets have readjusted now. I, th I think if you look at it, it's probably gone up a bit. I think the pound has recovered. I think that's the problem. I always forget that. Do you know, every time I say I'm going on a diet, we always seem to go back into a recession. So, uh, yeah. I, I was a re I was a real old, real old chunky monkey in 2007, and then 2008 I went on a diet. So I'm sorry about that. That's where the big crisis happened. Um, but let's dive into some extra stuff to do with this episode, and less about cake and coots and etc. etc. Um, this case, uh, I was stumbling across this one. This one was originally. Um, there's a series of ideas I've, I've been trying to get tv projects off the ground for ages and it's it, tv industry is a nightmare at the moment it really is a pig so i'm always trying to get original ideas off the ground because true crime on telly is a bit it's a bit stayed it's a bit old-fashioned it's a bit crap it's badly researched it's badly written so i'm trying to get things that are new out there um and what i wanted to do was create a series about uh psychiatric murders so not the usual kind of oh he's a killer he does some bad killings he's a victim oh no that kind of thing what i wanted to do was people who should have got the psychiatric help they needed but the system kind of failed them therefore they went on to kill someone and because of that when you look at this you actually have two victims really on the case the one, one the person who got killed the one person who didn't get the help they needed and that the system itself is the killer or by defect the law Unfortunately, nobody wants to touch it. Everybody wants the old boring, uh, killer is bad, victim good. Oh, look, bad cop, he do bad things. Victim, they good. You, you know, you're not allowed to do anything original. So unfortunately, I, uh, I've tried, I couldn't get that idea off the ground. So I thought I'll use some of this in um, in a future episode. And this is what this episode became. Um, nothing's available in, in the National Archives in relation to this case but because because it went uh through the houses of parliament and because there was a big old quite rightly a big old furore about it um especially with murder happening inside a prison uh the overcrowding situation that was going on and also the fact that vincent's vincent's convictions were, were kind of mishandled by the law at the time and and the medical establishment as well there was kind of enough information there for me to be able to get enough of the reports that were available and to kind of uh, use those so that was really interesting um so let's dive into some stuff that wouldn't have made it into the uh, episode so the ministerial report in that um 
who was it? it was sylvester fred sylvester was the mp uh, and he actually brought it forward in into the house uh house of parliament he was the mp for the area where um i'm not going to say where it was because obviously that's one of the quiz questions uh, the area where uh paul uh, actually grew up so it's kind of his mp but he was saying this to the minister of state uh, for the home office who at that time was leon britain he was just leon britain then not sir leon, leon britain um i might read a bit of it it said uh first should vincent smith as a life sentence prisoner have been located with a 20 year old serving a short sentence for a non-violent offense i must point out that vincent smith also aged 20 and it is the practice so far possible to keep separate from adults all prisoners who are under 21 when sentenced in fact there are about 100 young prisoners serving life sentences so this is uh leon britain saying this um in fact it is normal practice to mix them only with long or medium termers but when there are practical reasons for such as a need for full-time medical cover in vince vincent smith's case uh they may have to may have to be held in accommodation which caters primarily for the short and medium termers i.e stating oh, with vincent i think i've got a little bit that we'll dive into in a bit with but with vincent there were very specific reasons why he was kept in uh in wormwood scrubs as opposed to other other, other prisons um and if you think about it with uh, unfortunately the politicians here are doing what politicians do they're always trying to find excuses very very rarely do you ever hear them turn around and go do you know what we made a mistake we made a big mistake here we're going to learn from our lessons and the, this is the mistakes we made it's always about ass covering it's always about trying to find a, a spin it into a positive instead of going we made a mistake let's let's learn from that so unfortunately there's a lot of that going on here um leon smith continued the prison system has at any one time uh, to cope with a quite high concentration of people with serious criminal records serving a variety of sentences and while it is clearly necessary that the weak weak k should be protected we think that this should continue to be done on an individual basis through seg segregation from others in the interests of good order and discipline for their own protection what was the bit i wanted to read um going back to the trial at northampton crown court in october 1977 and this was the the uh, nicholas Fiodorus murder um obviously vincent was sentenced uh, to life uh, he pleaded uh, not guilty the court found him as otherwise um at that um between the prosecution and the defense there was no dispute uh that vincent smith was guilty of homicide but both of the sides were like we totally agree with this i think it's kind of interesting with this i think you've got to remember quite often that um he wouldn't have his own solicitor this would be a court appointed solicitor and, and quite often with things like this although they're going to do the best job that they can you've you've got to remember that uh um, quite often money comes to the front of this as well so sometimes with a lot of court cases it won't be it won't be what is what is 100 percent best for the client quite often there will be kind of a an overpowering fact factor hovering down upon these these lawyers and solicitors saying do you know you don't have time to do this you've got loads of other cases you've got to deal with each the longer you keep them in court it's all about money and you know, what is what is the quickest sentence and the most effective sentence you can you can uh get him convicted of or found innocent of whatever is the way so sometimes what would be the best sentence isn't always the one that you'd uh end up getting um it says on here uh, a psychiatrist psychiatrist who prepared the report for the prosecution agreed that vincent smith suffered from a psychopathic type of personality amounting to ab abnormality of the mind but he was unable to conclude that this was of sufficient degree to diminish his mental responsibility accordingly there being no medical evidence to support it and vincent smith having in effect withdrawn his second statement from the police diminished responsibility was not canvassed and um, we don't have the full report on this so we don't know why we don't know 
uh, we've seen this a couple of times before, or many times before, where someone will come in and they'll give one statement, and then they'll give another statement, and the first and second statements are entirely different. And sometimes you have to you have to take the evidence and say, okay, which of these is going to be the correct one? But the accused could still go, well, the first one is correct and the second one is a lie, which is what he did at this point, but we don't know why. So we don't know whether we don't know whether it was his lawyer who at this point said, I think it would be best for you if we accept your first statement or the second one. It could have been an agreement between the defence and the prosecution, that could be it. Or it could have been the police who said, we believe based on the evidence that the first statement is correct and the second statement is a lie. Um, Justice Melford Stevenson recommended that uh, Vincent should not be released for at least 20 years. Uh, so that is a, a uh, life sentence, a mandatory life sentence, but uh, not a whole life sentence. Um, just going to scroll down a bit more. Uh, we kind of touched on this in there as well uh, when he was tried in 1977 um, a consultant psychiatrist uh, who was reporting at the trial said he suffered from a psych a psychopathic disorder within the meaning of the mental health act 1959 uh, quote that is to say he was suffering from a persistent disorder or disability of the mind which results in abnorm abnormally aggressive or seriously irresponsible conduct However, the consultant also stated that Vincent Smith was unlikely to benefit from placement in a special hospital, i.e. Broadmoor. Uh, in fact, the question of making an order under Section 60-65 60, of the Mental Health Act, committing Vincent Smith to a hospital, i.e. a secure hospital, was not raised at the trial. Furthermore, the fact that Vincent Smith was a psychopath does not necessarily imply uh, his condition required his separation from all of those other prisoners. A, um, a psychopath is essentially a person who persistently displays antisocial behaviour but is not necessarily manifested in physical aggression to others. The management of a psychopath varies according, uh, according to the characteristics of the in individual. Although Vincent Smith had certainly shown aggressive tendencies in the early part of his sentence and he had committed various disciplinary offences, his last such offence prior to the killing of Paul Lahare was in mid-1978. So that's one year before. Um, just to mention, I think in the episode I mentioned in there that he was in prison uh, at Wormwood Scrubs. Uh, they didn't feel, as mentioned in that report there as well, you know, just because someone's a psychopath doesn't mean that they're physically violent. It could it could just be the way they present themselves and their behaviour and their attitude. So uh, so that's why the doctor in Wormwood Scrub said, you know, he, he has committed some violent offences, but, you know, he could have been drunk at the time. He could have been on drugs, we don't know. But they said day to day he, he didn't seem violent. Um, but he did go through stages where he was kind of... Um, uh, suicidal and depressed and he, you know, he was going through real stages so November I didn't put this in the episode because it throws it off but November 1978 uh, he was sent to Aylesbury Young Offenders uh, Young Prisoners Centre uh, and then he was then returned to Wormwood Scrubs on the 5th of December to undergo an operation for a self-inflicted injury to the hand uh, I mentioned that in the episode that he'd, he'd slit his wrists uh, and remained there because of a continuous concern that he would attempt suicide and a consequent need for a location in an establishment such as Wormwood Scrubs that had a full-time medical cover. It's kind of interesting, isn't it, in that some prisons, because of the size of them, they only have, like, Wormwood Scrubs, because it's got, I think it's got 40, 1,400 prisoners, therefore it has full-time medical cover. It has doctors, it has nurses, it has everything you need, because if you think about it, day or night, someone's going to need something, but in smaller prisons, it's part-time. So uh, quite often they have to call out for an ambulance, but here they can deal with most of it themselves. The great thing about Wormwood Scrubs is, as well is it's right next to the Queen Charlotte Hospital as well. That literally is next door. So if they have any problems, bang, you know, um, they've got they've got really good medical cover there if you need it. Um, it mentioned in there as well that he was segregated from other prisoners in the interest in good or, of good order and discipline and because of the suspicion that he was bullying another inmate. We don't know any more than that. Um, 
when they spoke to his mother so paul's mother um she said uh, even the detective who came to tell us about the court's decision said there was something drastically wrong about what had happened uh, his mother said the police said the only reason this man murdered my son is because it's an easy way to broadmoor when i asked why paul had been put in a cell with this man i was told it was because the prison was overcrowded paul was not an angel he was a petty thief but he didn't have to suffer these consequences i want an inquiry uh, and it only means saving someone else's son uh, with uh, I, I mentioned in the episode about the, the at the very end i mentioned about the fact that she got a a a summons to pay the the fees that paul hadn't paid which ultimately led to his death which is uh, the ultimate tragedy as well um also raised in court as well i'll read this straight this was from um, um fred sylvester the mp uh, i realize that my right honorable gentleman they have to say that in parliament i really hate that they have to refer to each other in a polite way they have to, even if they hate each other they have to go the right honorable gentleman you just think don't say that just call him a toss partner i've done with it I realise that my right honourable friend, the Home Secretary, may be receiving advice to protect his legal position, as Miss as Mr. Travis is. So that's um, Paul's mum is called Travis. That's her. That's her maiden name. So um, as and that uh, that would be her um, her her husband so his stepfather so i was trying to remember the connections then uh, as mr travis's solicitors have claimed general damages and some minor damages in connection with the funeral it is inevitable however that the stone-faced attitude of the home office in this matter should make mrs travis think in terms of compensation especially in view of the distress she has suffered immediately after the death at that time, although it was subsequently explained, she was distressed by the non-attendance at the funeral of a prison representative and by the way in which Paul's belongings were treated. Uh, it wasn't explained what happened to his belongings. Uh, but compensation is not the main issue. The central issue is that Mrs Travis ha has had no re reasonable explanation. Indeed, apart from the original letter from the Deputy Governor, she has had no word at all. There we go, folks. Uh, if you if you go onto um, Hansard, uh, they and you, and you type in Paul the Hare, you can you can kind of get the there's the full uh, transcript of this discussion. Quite often in Hansard, sometimes um, a minister will raise something, and they'll just go, "Yes, oh, well, we we acknowledge that that you have raised this, and thank you very much." And you just go, "Oh, it's a bit boring, actually. It's just there's not a lot in there." But because this was a big debate, because because the um, because prison overcrowding had been a problem and as mentioned in this episode do you know 40 for almost 45 years after this case we've still got 31 victorian prisons that are still in use in england and wales not including scotland and ireland and these are falling apart they really are but you know and, and even though uh every so often they say oh we're going to build another prison as we've seen you know they attempted to build a, a floating prison and that was shite that got shut down so um it's just one of those one of those dreadful things isn't it, it just the prison system doesn't work i think and as we i think as we all agree education is key right at the start education sorting out the issues with drugs uh, mental health is a big one as well how many people are inside because they have mental health issues not mental health issues that mean they should be in a psychiatric unit but mental health issues by which they just need help to kind of get through the day they need medication to kind of even themselves off do you know how many of them have never been diagnosed with with a problem or have trauma in their past uh, which could be resolved by going to see a counselor it's amazing i, I i've said this before do you know we have three emergency services fire ambulance and police and the police have to deal with a lot of mental health problems in fact do you know uh, talking to some police officers many of them say that quite often a lot of their work is dealing with mental health and really they shouldn't have to really they should be um even even paramedics really paramedics shouldn't have to be dealing with um mental health issues really we should the fourth emergency service should be mental health it should be fire ambulance 
police mental health. You call them up and then there's mental health professionals who come out and they know exactly what to do. They're professionals. It's amazing, isn't it? If you, if you, if you got run over by a car and you know your legs were broken, you wouldn't call a policeman and say, oh, can you put a plaster on it? Or you wouldn't call call a fire officer and say, oh, look, uh, my legs aren't on fire, but, you know, maybe you know a little bit of first aid. You would call a paramedic. It's, it's stupid, isn't it? Absolutely stupid. You know, if, you, if, you get, if you get mugged, you wouldn't call the fire brigade. You wouldn't call a paramedic and go, yeah, someone, someone, uh, someone stole my wallet. What's he? Get? It, it 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 doesn't make any sense, does it? So why would you call someone who's not who's not fully qualified to do that? Why wouldn't you have a team in place who would do it? But what is the answer? It's money, isn't it? It's all money. Unfortunately, uh, we all come up with these good things, but the second, any time the government turns around and says, "Well, we're going to need to increase taxes," everyone goes, "Oh no, oh no." Yeah, uh, we could we could just um, get all the big companies who don't pay any taxes and all the all the politicians who don't pay taxes and all the people who've got their money in offshore accounts to pay you know do the decent thing but they they won't and they don't and that's why we're screwed anyway that was a nice cheerful conversation to end on um let's do the quiz questions it's still noisy outside you can still hear the um the noisy 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 um what are they doing they're making cement really annoying luckily luckily they don't start until 8 a.m and they normally shut up around six which is good which is prison time that's convenient um question number one what road is wormwood scrubs on well uh if you uh if you got the first one you get the second one it was D- duquesne road question number two wormwood scrubs prison it was designed by who it was Edmund Duquesne. Question number three. What category from A to D is Wormwood Scrubs Prison? B. Question four. What part of the UK did Paul come from? Manchester. Manchester. Question number five. Uh, at what magistrate's court was Paul sentenced? Tottenham. Question number six. Right, this is the three parters. So you get a point for each, or you you get a point for, do you know, you get a point for each. Yeah, or, yeah, I think that's that kind of answers the question, doesn't it? Right. What what was Paul's first offence? So, um, he taking a car without the owner's consent. It's a car theft. The car not being insured. I always find that really fascinating because it's like well, if you take someone's car without their consent of course it's uninsured but it's one of those legal things isn't it where they go well we're gonna have to charge you for that as well Uh, and the third one was stealing a pen knife worth 50p so if you said car theft uninsured no insurance and stealing a pen knife you get all three or you get one point for each Uh, question number seven what is slopping out um it is uh where prisoners this is i i I think they stopped doing it in April, April 1994 was when they stopped doing it. But each morning, obviously, uh, in their cell, they'd have a little bucket because uh, they have to have, mostly have no plumbing. Don't forget, in, in these Victoria pl- prisons, when plumbing isn't kind of set up, uh, you'd have to, like, wee and poo into a little bucket. Uh, and then in the morning, as they're walking to breakfast, they'd have to carry their bucket down to a bathroom and then dump it in a kind of waste facility oh lovely that must have smelt absolutely delicious and probably a lot of people thought you know what i fancy an egg sandwich now um and question number eight the final one the main gates of wormwood scrubs prison looks like what have a look at it on, on google maps uh, it looks like castle turrets and that's the kind of the idea it was meant to look quite defensive and uh, aggressive um, so there we go folks that was extra mile at some point um when hs2 assholes shut up for a bit i might be able to i might be able to go and record tonight's episode but it looks like i won't so uh oh, i'll do it tonight i'll probably be tired anyway i hope you enjoyed that episode that was episode 260 uh we have i think we have at least two more one parters to come and then we're going to do a nice big month long 
thing. It's going to be a short series of daily episodes that come out. They're only going to be short, like three or four minutes. The idea is you can listen to them at any point. You can listen to them on the toilet. You can listen to them waiting for a bus. They're going to be short and fast, and they all link together. Uh, you can listen to them in one go, or you can listen to them every day. Whatever suits you, but um, I'm looking forward to writing that. That'll be something different, but something exciting. So, um thank you for listening to the show it's very much appreciated don't forget if you uh, want to leave a review that's very much appreciated as well really does i got burpees it always happens at this point uh, it really does help us little podcasts kind of uh, get up the charts because we're disappearing we're dying all the corporates have taken over and soon all the little independent podcasts all the little bedroom ones are going to disappear because we can't do it anymore and you're going to be stuck with crappy Oh, horrible corporate ones of which they get their information from Wikipedia and their researchers go from making a a cookery program to making a podcast about true crime and it's just going to be badly written and shit and yeah it's sad it's sad times for podcasting it really is so so help your uh, small independent podcasts it's very much appreciated have a good one folks stay safe be good lots of love i would have some biscuits but i literally have eaten a whole pack of custard creams which mr timothy biscuits sir timothy biscuits will be very happy about have a good one folks stay safe be good lots of love but